Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Well, I have yet to react to Jay Foreman, uh, but this is a channel that I have been a fan of for a while now. Uh, and I try to do my reactions to videos I haven't previously seen. Uh, when I have seen the video, I let you guys know that ahead of time that I've seen it before. Uh, so this video just came out about a week ago. It's called Why British Cities Make No Sense. And as an Anglophile, as somebody who loves not only the British people, but the British culture and history, uh, and I've loved every visit that I've had there, uh, this is one that I'm kind of interested to see where it goes. I'll put a link in the description so you can check them out. Not only this video, but all of his videos. If you like British style of humor and you're interested at all in England, Scotland, Wales, uh, things like that, you'll definitely enjoy this channel. Big shout out to Mickey in Cherryville, North Carolina, and Cameron in Webster, New York. Thank you guys so much for your support. A few of you have messaged me asking me when your shout out's going to be. I'm doing two before and two at the end of each video, and we had like 130 new patrons sign up in the last month, so it's taken a little bit of time to get caught up on all those, but I promise you, I'm taking them in the order that Patreon gives them to me, so it will be coming. Thank you so much in advance. Let's dive in. How would you define a city? It's what you do on a cherry. How would you define a city? An inhabited place of greater size, population, or importance than a town or village. Wait, 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 wait. I need to back up for a second. Did his head disappear and reappear? Did they do some, like, special effects there? Harry. They did. That's awesome. I wasn't even watching. I was, I was too busy looking at the guy on the left and thinking how much he looks like my friend Leighton Hughes. Interesting. An inhabited place of greater size, population, or importance than a town or village. That's better, but wrong. Welcome to Map. Ow! Welcome to Map Men. We're the men, and here's the map. Map Men, Map Men, Map, Map, Map Men, Men. So, I know in every country uh, there are specific definitions for things like cities and towns. And, you know, it can get really complicated uh, depending on where you live because you could call your place that you live by something that it isn't technically. I grew up in a town called Mineral Ridge, which technically doesn't even exist. It's a census designated place. I was in my school district. I, I went to Mineral Ridge High School, but it was called Weathersfield Township Schools. But there were other cities within Weathersfield Township and people with all kinds of different addresses lived in uh, in the Mineral Ridge School District. It's just really, really weird. And uh, you have counties, which means something different here than they do in other places, and it's complicated. In the majority of the world where it's not Britain, the definition of city is reasonably reasonable. In Japan, a city is any settlement with more than 50,000 people. Mm. In the USA, a city is anywhere with its own incorporated government. But Britain, as per you... And yeah, the government's kind of the key thing here in the States. Like, I live in Austin Town which is huge. It's like 30,000 people, but it's not a city. It's not even a town. It's a township because we have a township government with township trustees. We don't have a mayor. We don't have a city council. And there are cities around us that are much, much smaller, sometimes just a few thousand people that do have a mayor and a city council. Canfield, which uh, is right next door to us, is smaller than Austin Town, but it's a city. It has its own special they way of doing things. things. Here is a map of all 76 places in the UK that are officially classed as cities. And I think Wrexham just became a city in like the last year or so. There's really only a couple of cities in Wales. Newport, Cardiff, Swansea, St. David's, Bangor, St. Asaph. I probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, and Wrexham. That's about it. The usual ones you've heard of are there. Liverpool, Manchester, Bradford, Leeds, and so on. But among them are some surprising and seemingly unworthy cities. Ely with just 20,000 people, Ripon with just 16,000 people, and St David's with less than 1,500 people. Barely enough for a flash mob. And oppositely, there are some very notable places that are mysteriously not on this map. Where's Reading? Or Northampton? Mm. Or Bournemouth? The most surprising omission from this list is none other than London. Britain's capital city is technically not a city. Although confusingly, Greater London contains within it the city of Westminster and the tiny, confusingly named City of London, which is not the same as London. And when I first learned about this was uh, when I was studying Jack the Ripper, because most of the Jack the Ripper murders took place outside of the City of London. Uh, they were kind of the London Metropolitan Police were in charge of that. But then one of the murders took place within the city limits of the City of London, which is only like a mile or so, uh, like in each direction. 
So what's going on? If British cityness what's is clearly nothing to do with size, then what is the criteria? What makes a British city a city? I think I know this one. I think you don't. It's something to do with cheese. Let's deal with some common misconceptions. Cathedral. Contrary to popular wrongness, city status in the UK has nothing to do with having a cathedral. There are 12 cities without a cathedral of any kind. And 32 non-cities with a cathedral of any kind. Yay. University. Another common assumption is that you can't spell university without city. But, just as with cathedrals, there are multiple examples proving that this is not the case, including 17 UK cities that do not have universities. Can you name three? Hard Knocks Cooper Jones. Um, Ripon, Wakefield and St Asaph. Correct, and for a bonus, can you also name three non-cities that do have universities? Northampton, Reading and Ipswich. And that's our bonus Ipswich. word of the day! And it's where you'll be spending an all-expenses-paid weekend trip to Ipswich with your mother. <laughs> Sometimes you'll see me wear an Ipswich jersey because I'm a big fan of Ed Sheeran and Ed Sheeran, that's his hometown team and he sponsors them. You by the town of Ipswich. Meh. <laughs> In an admittedly nowhere near as common as the other two, but we're going to deal with it anyway, misconception. Just because you're at mayor doesn't mean the thing you're at mayor of is a city. For two examples, Ramji Chauhan is the old-timey ceremonial red robe and gold chain Lord Mayor of Harrow, which is a dull suburban borough, not a city. And Oliver Coppard is the democratically elected Metro Mayor of South Yorkshire, a massive political region comprising mostly countryside, which is even more not a city. The term mayor in Britain is almost as confusing, useless and vague mm. as city itself. So then, what is the answer? What decides whether a place makes the official British list of cities? The surprisingly simple answer is... The King! I was gonna say, the King was just in Wrexham to make them a city. I think it really just kind of comes down to the King giving them city status. Going back to the 10th century, city status in Britain is granted by personal command of the Sovereign and conferred by letters patent. Do you know what that means? I do. Not. The long version is this, and the short version is every city on the official list has been put there by the monarch. It's as simple as that. On the list, city. Not on the list, not a city. So why then do so many people think it's about cathedrals? Because it used to be. It and here's the thing too. A lot of times there is a difference between the actual or the technical definition of a place and kind of the de facto way that we refer to them, right? Uh, something may not be a city, but we may call it a city just because we call any large collection of people that has a name a city, even though it might not technically be that. In the olden days, all settlements by today's standards were rather small. With Britain's population being overwhelmingly rural, cities weren't considered important if they were big, but if they were powerful. Mm. Back then, power came from the church. Big cathedrals such as Wells, Ely and St Albans, which oversaw large chunks of the surrounding countryside, made the settlements they were in important settlements. And so the then monarch awarded these places city status. Which and a lot of times when something was important, like if they had a trade centre or manufacturing hub in later times, or a cathedral and it was a centre of worship, it would necessarily grow in terms of population. Uh, you know, you look at some of the towns that I've researched for books that I've written on uh, family history, uh, 200 years ago, maybe had a thousand people and today they have a hundred thousand. Well, what changed? Well, they were in a particular manufacturing center and they attracted a lot of people. They retain to this day. But what about all those cities with city status that don't have cathedrals? When did the monarch start awarding city status to them and why? In the 19th century and because... The arrival of the Industrial Revolution there caused some towns to turn into manufacturing powerhouses and go through smoky growth spurts. By the so 18th this is, for example, when Birmingham goes to become the second largest city in the UK and a lot of the towns in what we call the black country that are in that area like Tipton and, um, and Dudley and things like that, they grew up out of almost nothing. In the 50s, the little town of Birmingham was now bursting with factory workers and had outgrown the nearby cities of Lichfield and Leicester. The citizens insisted that the synod slanted system that saw sensible cities for several consecutive centuries suddenly seemed silly. That was well impressive. Done. And demanded that their town be given the city status it deserved. So the Prime Minister, Lord Salisbury, decided the time had come to change the cathedral rules. Oh, excellent. That's really good. No, thank you. Top, thank you. Top, top, thank you. And reinvented the meaning of city. Incidentally, that's the same Lord Salisbury who, at the same time, reinvented the meaning of the word county. In 1880. Yeah, the, uh, the whole. There's historic counties, and now there's like. Uh, the counties that are used in terms of their political organization today, uh, and they've changed a lot over time. 
1889, Birmingham's size and industrial importance was officially acknowledged when it became the first place without an Anglican cathedral to gain city status. Confusingly, Birmingham's church turned into a cathedral later in 1905, but for an explanation of how that works, ask a priest. Father, what's the difference between a church and a cathedral? Uh, something to do with bishops? Birmingham yeah. was quickly followed by cathedral-free Sheffield, Bradford, Hull, Nottingham, and a slow trickle of other godless heathen towns. And a lot of these are kind of further north or in the Midlands of England, like Leicester and Nottingham. Uh, Leeds is up in the north. Uh, you can see Lancaster is up there in the north. These are places where originally there weren't high population, but as uh, transportation was easier, and as industry grew, a lot of these population centers started to take off. Towns that had recently become large, joining throughout the 20th century. The list was gradually starting to make more and more sense. Until 1994, when a completely good run of sensible cityings was ruined by the tiny Welsh village of St David's for no good reason. Apparently, the Queen just liked it. The thing that makes this otherwise logical list illogical is these pesky small cities that ruin it for the I love how ones. they changed the St. Albans sign. St. Albans is north of London to St. David's, which is all the way over in the west in Wales. That's awesome. So can a place lose its city status if it doesn't deserve it anymore? In 1998, Little Rochester and Kent, which had been a city since 1211, merged its local council with its neighbours to form the modern unitary authority of Medway. What they didn't realise was doing this effectively removed Rochester from the official list of British cities. The new Council of Medway could have retained city status simply by filling in a bit of paperwork, but they forgot, making poor Rochester the only place in the UK ever to lose its city status. The nothing of Rochester. Luckily, the Rochesterians didn't have to wait very long for a chance to put things right. The year 2000 was the roundest date in the calendar in living memory, even for trees. The government celebrated this milestone with a big blancmange, a bicycle wheel, and the announcement of a bidding round for city status. Three new a cities were to the list, and for the first time ever, any town with ambitions to become a city could apply to be one, and size did not matter. The criteria they were looking for were notable features, historic features, royal features, and a forward-looking attitude. And so, lots of towns submitted bids, each having to provide a 25-page pamphlet and lots of photos explaining why they were winning. A hot favourite to win was Reading. The Wait, did I say and Hove for Brighton? And lots of photos explaining why they were Yeah. <laughs> Alright, nice. They were worthy. A hot favourite to win was Reading, the largest town in England with a fast-growing tech sector. It boldly ticked all these boxes. And the winners of Millennium City Status 2000 are... Inverness, Brighton Hove, and Wolverhampton. So Inverness all the way up in Scotland, Brighton Hove all the way down on the south end of England, and Wolverhampton in the Midlands near Birmingham. Oh, what the... the national bidding for city status frenzy was so much fun, the government decided to make it a semi-regular thing every time the Queen had a party. Newport, Newry, Preston, Stirling, and Lisbon. Lisbon? Lisburn. Oh, Lisburn. Chelmsford, the one in County Antrim. St. Asaph? Wales ran out of big towns. Bangor, Colchester, Doncaster, Dunfermline, Milton Keynes, Wrexham, and South End. So there were a bunch this year, dang. So every 10 years basically is what we're doing now. So Bangor's in Wales, uh, Dunfermline's in Scotland, north of Edinburgh, Milton Keynes is outside of London, northwest, Wrexham, of course, everybody knows where Wrexham is all of a sudden. And that brings us to today's grand total of 76 cities. Eight in Scotland, seven in Wales, six in Northern Ireland, and 55 in England. No flag. Long story. Wow. The question we need to ask, other than why did the Queen hate Reading so much, is why bother bidding? Submitting a bid is an expensive business, with tens of thousands of pounds being spent on printer ink alone. So what are the advantages of being a city instead of a town? Extra government funding? Nope. Extra local powers? Nope. Extra promotion for tourism? Nah. Who was that? Sorry, typo. The clue is in the name, city status. That's a very good word for it because that's literally all it is. And that's why every town that bids has a different justification for why hmm. their bid was bother-worthy. Preston said gaining city status in 2002 put them on the map, even though our research has shown that Preston was already on most maps. Perth claimed that in the decade since becoming a city in 2012, its economy grew 12%, which would be impressive if it weren't for nearby Dundee also growing by about 12%. Towns don't even need to win to benefit from bidding. The parish council of Marazion in Cornwall submitted a no-hoper underdog bid without their bosses in Cornwall ever knowing about it. They were quickly disqualified, but not before the subsequent publicity resulted in a mini boost in tourism. The people who seem to get the most tangible benefit from the bidding process... It's Rishi Sunak! He's the Prime Minister, but sounds like 
Maybe not for a real long time. It's starting to sound like people are turning on him. Man, UK, get your, at least the Tories, get your Prime Minister Act together, man. I thought we had it bad here. Elves. Awarding city status to an unsung town is a way to appear to show support for it and get some positive PR without having to commit any time or money. But is this okay? Is it right that the government of the day gets to mess with the dictionary definition of a geographical word? Is it perhaps time we dropped this nonsense of a system and replaced it with something more meaningful? Nah. The government has 8,007 more important things to worry about than what the meaning of city 8, is. 8,007 Once specifically. those have been sorted, yes, we might look at redefining... Wait, let's look at some of this list. Put a human on Pluto just for misery. Ban bottled water. Keep Britain tidy. Listen, honestly, in all the countries I've been in in Europe, like places like London, it that's one of the cleanest, big, hu like huge cities I've been in. I know not every part. I, I was in Whitechapel and it was not clean. Whitechapel looked like Manhattan. Manhattan's not clean at all um paris not clean but london at least like westminster in that area really really nice uh sorry google google our employ are our employers sorry google make google pay their taxes make amazon pay their taxes apologize to uh, invade canada apologize to canada make poo sticks an olympic sport i don't even know what that is but now i'm curious definition and even then we probably shouldn't after all, a vague, archaic, mostly harmless tradition fraught with pomp and ceremony and mawkish self-aggrandizing with a bit of royalty thrown in is about the most British thing imaginable and would never happen in a boring, sensible country like Germany. Regular rounds of royal city statusing look set to be with us for many jubilees to come. So if you want your town to become a city, just sit tight and wait and rest assured that at this rate, every corner of the country will become a city by the year 3000. And the winner is... Services on the <laughs> so 2032, I guess we could probably expect the next ones, assuming King Charles kind of keeps the same standard and assuming he's around in nine years. I mean, he's not getting any younger. Let's hope he is. God save the king. But we'll see. So I thought that was interesting. That was fun. It was something a little different. I hope you guys enjoyed them. If you are a fan of their channel and there's a particular one of their videos you think it would be interesting for me to do a reaction to, let me know in the comment section below. And I'll tr probably check out some more if this one does well. So we'll see. Uh, big shout out to Juan in Winter Springs, Florida. And Nicholas in Sweden. Thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon. If you want to consider supporting on Patreon, check out the link in the description below. My first kind of new original content that isn't like from a historic site but was shot right here in studio is coming in the next couple of days. So be watching for that. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.